Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we are back once again with a brand new video commentary for BFME 2 on the patch 1.9 version 2.0. Today also on a different map by the way, it's a nice matchup between goblins and elves, good against evil, El Clasico, I like it, I know you do as well, let's get it started. On the left side of the map we have the blue elven player Ectelion against the white goblin player Sauron on the right side. Let's take a look into the map first, shall we? So we have work layers on this map around this side but also around the other side. And also two troll layers at the bottom left protecting this in. The same situation also at the top right side also protecting this in. I have, no, I have not seen this map before so it's a nice map with water, waterfall here. We have also some Dunadain Rangers with the camps. Looks pretty nice to me. I hope you're gonna like it as well, guys. Anyways, we're gonna have two Malone trees coming up for the Elven play Ectelion. On the other side, we see two tunnels into the first Goblin Cave. Foresight has been used to reveal the area from the Elven player. And the Goblin player hasn't picked anything just yet. He might go for the Tainted Land. But also he might start with the Cave Beds, for example, in order to reveal this area. Okay, so... Actually, a lot of Malone trees are coming up for the Elven play Ectelion. He has now 4 under his control without any production building so far. That means Sauron is gonna be the first one who is gonna... Actually, he's cancelling the Goblin Pit, Goblin Lair, and now going for the Spider Pit instead. Alright, but he was losing a lot of time, unfortunately. He could have gotten already one Goblin Warrior on the field so far. He's gonna build another tunnel around this side. And the Elven play is now finally going for the Elven Barracks. So he's gonna stick up with the infantry units first, potentially Lorien warriors, archers, cave pets is gonna be used a little bit later, which was a good timing from the goblin player, he was able to see the elven barracks now, which is pretty nice. On the other side we're gonna have some spiderlings coming up first for the goblin player Sauron guys. He's building another offensive tunnel this time, around the top right side. And let's see, I mean spiderlings here, they are pretty powerful, they cost 300 each as well. With the Goblin Caves level 2, you might recruit some of the Goblin Spider Riders, they cost 600 here. Uh, the Cave Bats are gonna be gone very very soon. And the Cave Bats are very powerful in BFME 2 as well guys, they're gonna lose all the buffs and leadership effects. So it's a different uh, debuff than in Rise of the Witch King, in, in Rise of the Witch King it only removes the leadership. But the buff can't be removed in, uh, in Rise of the Witch King. A lot of untouched Malone trees so far from the album play, he has a great amount of resource income. He has arches on the field first. Might be able to see the tunnel by the way. Yeah, and that's gonna be actually the case, which is pretty nice. And archers in BFME 2 are dealing way more damage to buildings than in Rise of the Witch King. Spider links are on the field. Uh, the Alvin units are stealthed, just like in Rise of the Witch King, that's their passive. Around the trees, they can get invisible. And look at the damage they are dealing against the spider links. Sauron has to be extremely careful and he has to actually disengage. Very well done here from the Alvin player, keeping those Malone trees alive. And because he was building so many, he has right now already 500 command points collected. The Goblin player has only 450. And also, it was a 4 farm start from the Alvin player Sauron. That means he will have those Malone trees hitting level 2 way before the tunnels from the Goblin player Sauron. Whereas now, a Goblin Cave and a Spider Pit under his control. Spiderlings, however, they were not able to achieve anything so far because um, the archers were always in time protecting those Malone trees. And they are being actually dead now <laughs> from the Lorien warriors. Yes, uh, I mean Lorien archers. He has so many of them already, guys. One, two, three battalions on the field. And they are mainly being used for now for defensive purposes. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice placement also around this side. That means the second the units from the Goblin player Sauron are gonna enter the battlefield from this tunnel. They're gonna get damaged big time from those Lorien archers. Pretty nice. Uh, he might go for a hero and I think that's gonna be the case because he has a great amount of resource income. He has not that many units on the field. That means early high gear can be potentially very nice to have for the Alvin player. The Goblin player on the other side has the Spider Pits level 2 now which is nice. The Goblin Spider Riders, they are gonna be a great counter unit to those Lorien archers but also to those Lorien warriors. And the Alvin player, uh, Alvin player Ectelion doesn't have any pikemen on the field so far. But that's gonna be changed now, he is recruiting the first one. Hydir is indeed on the field now guys. Uh, with level 4 he has the leadership unlocked, which is a damage leadership, it's always nice. 50% damage and also 25% increased combat experience. 
Oh, the Goblin Spider Riders are committing. Very well done here. Very well, tra uh, nice trample. Aldir is leveling up like crazy. <laughs> He's already level 2, guys. Remember, in BFME 2, the heroes are leveling up way, way faster, especially until level 4 and to level 5. Then in Rise of the Witch King. Wait a second, I have to lower the voice settings here a little bit. I feel like that's a little bit too too loud. Should be fine now, guys. Aldir is drawing the sword, which is a mistake. You can't chase down those spiderlings like this. You should always use the bow if you have the chance to shoot them down. The tunnel has been taken down. The Goblin Spider Riders, they will be able to take down this Malone Tree in the backside potentially, but the Pikemen are moving. However, the Malone Trees from the Alvin Faction are very squishy resource buildings. They have only 1000 HP. And taking them down is way, way easier than, for example, the Mineshaft from the Dwarven Faction or the Farm from the Men of the West Faction. Indeed, the Malone Tree has been taken down, but the Goblin Spider Riders, I don't think they can make it out alive. It would be nice if they could, but Haldir will be able to finish them off. On the other side, on the bright side, however, for the Goblin player Sauron, his tunnels are pretty much untied so far. And those Goblin uh, Riders are doing a great job against, you know, Lorien Warriors. We have also Arvin on the field, guys, as the second hero from the Alvin player Ectelion. Uh, she will unlock the flat ability with level 5. But it's a scaling ability. The flat horses are improved at level 10. So once you hit level 10, your flat abilities can also deal more damage. Aldir on the other side is already almost level 3, remember level 4 is gonna be a nice power spike, and then level 10 with the golden arrow, which is gonna be something like the small, small cloud break and stun the enemy units. He's creeping the work layer, that's gonna take him a lot of time actually, needs the help of those units in order to kill the layer fast enough. The Malone tree in the front side is being taken down, and the Elven player is not in position actually guys, he has to move also with Haldir, but Haldir is just gonna keep creeping this one I guess. He is forced to build some, you know, defensive expansions around the fortress. But it looks like he's gonna lose yet another Malone tree, guys, to those Goblin Warriors. And that's why it's so important in BFME 2 to react fa much, much faster. Because you are getting punished big time if you are not in position in time. Like, if you give those Goblin Warriors, like, 5 to 10 seconds, they will be able to destroy your Malone trees in 2 seconds, pretty much. Look at the damage they are able to deal with the aggressive stance. I mean, taking down those Malone trees is, as you can see, way, 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 way easier than in Rise of the Witch King. Haldir has to be careful, he is only level 3. Does he have heal ability available? He can go for it if he wants to, guys, but he's taking way too much damage here from those Goblin uh, Riders. Arvin is trying to help, but unlike in Rise of the Witch King, she has no Atelas. Heal has been chosen from the Spellbook. Now, you know, he might try to beat him with the archers in the backside. Heal is being used now. He was also able to heal Arvin. Arvin is you know, pretty squishy hero after all. And she's dying quite fast. I think the Elven player Ectelion will definitely need some more pikemen if he wants to be able to deal with those goblin spider riders. Hydra is safe for now. She, you know, he's also gonna build a well potentially. We have to sustain for the heroes. 450 command points for the Elven player, 2 power points collected after the heal and foresight. On the other side, we have 700 command points collected for Sauron, the goblin player. He has collected 8 power points after the cave pads. He has now double goblin, uh, double, <laughs> double goblin cave, sorry. One spider pits level 2 and also one fissure level 2 on the field, guys. Uh, Arvin has also leadership, which by the way can stack with the leadership of Haldir because it's a dif uh, different uh, types of leadership. It's an armor leadership after all. So if uh, Arvin is level, four, level 3 and Haldir is level 4 and they are standing next to the units, they will be able to give the units also leadership, both of them. The damage leadership, if you have two of them, it's not gonna stack, by the way. But if you have two different types of leadership, that's gonna stack in BFME 2, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, in which all the leadership is pretty much identical. There is only one leadership, and that's 33% damage, 33% armor, and 50% combat experience. And it's always the same, regardless which hero it is, or regardless which power point ability it is. 900 command points for the goblin player without any power expansions around the fortress. And actually, in BFME 2, it's not increasing your command points. I mean, it doesn't say in the description at least. Remember, in Rise of the Witch King, power expansions are able to increase your command points by 75 each. 850 command points, great amount of resource income for the goblin player. He has no heroes on the field so far though, he's spamming units all the time. 
Wildman of Dunland is gonna be ready now. Keith Bats is available as well. And Wildman of Dunland is going to be used on top of the uh, Pikeman, which is pretty nice. Look the money, guys, from the Goblin player. The money is rising to the sky, <laughs> which is pretty nice. And he keeps up the pressure all the time. That means during all this time, the Goblin player, uh, Sauron, is untouched himself, which is impressive. Like, you know what man, what, are, what people are saying, you know, offense is most of the time the best defense. And that's a proof why this statement is true. The Malone trees are dying one by one. Stable is going down next. It's a level 2 stable as well. He might lose the barracks. He has two of them on the field so far. The white man with the pillage ability are able to steal money from the Alvin player constantly as long as they keep attacking the enemy buildings. The Malone tree level 2 is going to be the next target. He was also using Warchant, by the way. That's the reason why they are glowing. I did this level 4 now, has leadership unlocked, foresight is being used on these elven archers. Some shenanigans are happening around the fortress, water is falling, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Alright, I mean, again, the goblin player has so much money collected, look at this guys, he has almost 3k. He was investing that into a hero now. Uh, what would be nice in this matchup is definitely goblin king Gorkil. I would like to see him, maybe that's gonna be also his plan. Um, the Alvin player has to play extremely defensive right now. He can't afford to move forward. Because he has not many units besides this one on the field. And the second he moves forward, he will get attacked from multiple sides. And that's the thing, you know. The goblins, but also dwarves, they are the best when it comes to snowballing their lead. Because during all this time, he can expand, obviously. Build multiple tunnels. And then use those tunnels to attack. You can also use them for defense. So if you are getting attacked, you can use this tunnel, for example, to get back in this area pretty much in the same second. And ladies and gentlemen, we have the Spider Queen herself. Shelob is joining the battlefield for the Goblin Flare Sauron. A hero we don't see very often in Rise of the Witch King at least. And she has instill terror available with level 3, she has, she has the poison sting available with level 6, she has the tunnel with level 7 and then with level 10. She has this uh, spider web kind of thing, cripples enemy units in spider webs for 4.5 4 seconds and drains their life for the duration. She love is healed based on the total damage dealt uh, to the heroes with disability. I think it's nice, you can cripple down every unit, including heroes if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully we will get the chance to see this again, level 10. Sounds hard, but keep in mind that in BFME 2, the heroes are able to level up way faster and way, way easier. We have a lot of units from the Goblin player. Uh, luckily, now those units have leadership from both the heroes, Arvin and Haldir. That means they have damage leadership and they have also armor leadership, guys. You can also go for the rallying call if he wants to for the double buff. Warchan is going to be used on those spider riders. They are using this, uh, the bow mod. They have some archers on the backside. Kribin is going to be used. That's going to shut down the entire leadership right now from the Alvin army. The goblin spider riders are looking for a beautiful trample. They are riding through the pikemen. They're going to get damaged big time. But it's not a big deal because he has so much more units on the field than the goblin player. The heroes are still hard to deal with though. And you should try to avoid giving them too many uh, experience points. Because once Arvin is level 5 and she's really close for that, the flat ability can be very, very impactful, guys. 11 power points collected now for the Elven player after the heal and foresight. He has 700 command points now because he keeps losing those Malone trees all the time. On the other side, we have almost 10 power points collected after the Whiteman of Dunland, the Keyfeds, but also the Warchan from the Goblin player Sauron. And he has almost full command points, full would be uh, 1000. And now he is full, guys. Again, he has an incredible amount of resource income. Let me take a look into Shelob. She's gonna use the instill terror now on these elven units. They're gonna now run away from Shelob. She has to be careful, unlike the good factions, evil factions don't have a way of healing and Shelob has been taken down. Not only that, but also Arvin was able to hit level 5 now. Flood is available, guys. She might be using it against those spider riders. In a situation like this, it would be nice. Use it now, use it now, use it now. Oh, we're gonna have Tom Bombadil summon. Flat maybe as well for the combination here. But I think it's not even needed and the Alvin player will be able to defend this Malone 3 which is almost level 3. 15 power points collected though for Sauron the Goblin player. On the other side we have almost 10 power points collected after the Tom Bombadil, the Foresight and the heal from the Alvin player Ectelion. Arvin is almost level 6. 
and also Haldir is almost level 6. Remember level 10 is gonna be a huge power spike for the elven hero Haldir guys. Alright, some lenses were able to take down some of those tunnels I'm assuming, one of them is level 3. The goblin player is actually still 950 command points, that's quite a lot. And look at these tunnels guys, they are untouched, level 3, level 3, so the resource income is looking nice. And the armory is also getting upgraded to level 3. That means we might see the spider upgrades purchased very soon on those goblin spider riders or goblin archers from the goblin cave level 3 now. Every level 3 building is acting like a tower as well. Not only that, but they're gonna be also way way tankier. Like look at this HP now, 4900, <laughs> which is quite a lot. And uh, you know, Elvin uh, Barracks with level 1 has 3000 HP. Alright, the inn is under control now from the Elven player. Let's see if he's gonna recruit any kind of special unit from this one. The troll layer at the top side has been taken down as well. It looks like we have still only one work layer left on the map. And there is a, a treasure on the ground, which I don't like to see. <laughs> Grab it! <laughs> Take it! And look at this, guys. The Watcher is gonna be available now for the next fight, which will be potentially used defensively. And it's able to take down the entire enemy army if they are clumped like this. So the Elven player kinda has to smell it coming and has to avoid grouping with all his units at the same time. But the, the second I say it, he is gonna fall for it and the Watcher is coming in clutch. The animation and the you know, impact what the Watcher can have in the game is actually insane. Everything is gone pretty much, now he has to run away. The white man of Dunland summoned defensively into the war chan, into the cave pad, so the goblin player is using everything and is going all out. The flat ability is available if I'm not mistaken. No, she was using it, but I missed this one. The watcher done his job. Now he's, you know, he can afford to leave Middle Earth once again, and yeah. The watcher is one of the best army killing abilities in Battle for Middle Earth 2 and in Rise of the Witch King for sure. Who command points for the goblin player? Did he actually revive his Shelob? Because I can't see her on the field anymore. I think not. I think uh, he doesn't want to invest the money again. And I feel like Shelob was also not very strong. But we have Gore killed the Goblin King on the field, guys. He's still level 1. Uh, but he can get on his, on his uh, Scorpion with level 3. And again, leveling them up early on is quite easy. Skull Totem is available, which is going to be used now. Uh, it's kind of like a small painted land. In order to get the effect of this one, you have to fight on this area. Uh, there is no transition just yet into anything something into anything like uh, Mirkwood Arches so far from the Alvin player. Arvin is still remaining on the field, she has unlocked all the abilities. Aldir is also almost level 6. Level 10 is gonna be needed to unlock the Golden Arrow. And there it is, uh, Garkiel the Scorpion King is getting mounted. You might also see some more impactful or more stronger heroes from the album player, like for example Transwheel can be a nice choice, Legolas can be a nice choice, Glorfindel can be a nice choice, or even Elrond. And I just counted all the heroes, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that's pretty much it. You can't afford other heroes than that one from the album faction. The only hero remaining on the field from the goblin player, um, Sauron so far, is Gorkil the Goblin King, who is by the way almost level 4. Level 4 is gonna unlock the leadership. Uh, which, by the way, can stack with the Skull Totem. And yeah, you know, you get here 35% increased armor, which is quite nice. And the leadership is gonna give you also 25% armor and 25% combat experience. And it's gonna even affect the trolls, so you might, you know, get some trolls on the field later on. Cave trolls from the Fissure level 1. And you will also get leadership on these monsters. Which, by the way, doesn't exist in Rise of the Witch King. In Rise of the Witch King, there is nothing that can make those trolls or the other monsters stronger. Almost 15 power points collected after the Watcher. Full command points for a long, long time. On the other side, we have Eagle Summon ready from the Elven player Exilion. He has 725 command points collected, guys. But he's struggling. I mean, he can't really afford to reach the other side of the map. He has to play extremely defensively now. Because he has to kind of... Uh, you know, reveal the area all the time and in order to take down the enemy tunnels left and right. He has to make sure that there are no tunnels nearby before he moves for an all-out fight. And, you know, the more he waits, the harder it's gonna become for him because the Watcher is gonna be eventually ready again. So if you wait too much or too long, you might uh, give him the chance to reload the cooldown of the Watcher, which can again be used for defense. 
Goblin Spider Riders with Fighter Upgrade Purchase, by the way. And one of them is almost level 5. The max, max rank in BFME 2 is level 10. It's not limited, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, to level 5. The Builder was able to get in safety. The tunnel here is being taken down. Haldir is getting more and more experience. 20 power points collected and we have the Eagle Summon now. They are actually taking a lot of damage from those uh, Goblin Archers slash Goblin Spider Riders. The power points are rising for the Goblin player. And let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. I mean... Actually, the Eagles, they don't take too much damage from these Archers. They can still keep going, guys. But the problem here for the, for the Elven player, Dillion, is that he has not many units on the field that can deal the damage he's looking for. Like, one of the level 3 tunnels has been taken down. We have also Bleed of Purity available for yet another Elven hero. This, name, this, um, this time it's Glorfindel. He becomes immune to damage, by the way. Um... Yeah, for 10 seconds. But he's dead. <laughs> and he's dead. The second I'm saying that, he's dead to the pikeman. I mean, when Blade of Purity is active, he's gonna become immortal for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is not that much, so you can still take him down right after. Especially when he's mounted. He's gonna become much more vulnerable. And look at this, guys. Baldrog summon is gonna be ready. And there it is. The big boy. The shadow and the darkness. I mean, that's pretty much the same. I don't know about it, but I don't know what I'm saying. What I'm saying, guys. Sorry, guys. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm always excited when I see Balrog, you know. And I would love to see now Gandalf stepping up and saying, you know, go back to the shadow, go back. And then, you know, the Gandalf stuff is happening. He's turning to white and stuff like this. All right, Balrog, do your thing. Breathfire is gonna be used now on the expansions around the fortress. Batman of Dunland summon to kill the buildings. Arrow Volley is being used defensively, actually being able to kill those units. And saving the stable level 3 so far. The Fire Whip is being used on one of the Malone trees. The Alvin player has barely any units remaining on the field, guys. I lied, because he has so many units still on the field. Okay, I take it back. Like, he has all the units. He's using them, you know, mainly for offense. During all this time, Balrog is making sure to take down pretty much every single building beside the fortress. You can't take down the fortress with Balrog all alone, that's not possible. His damage against the fortress is pretty limited. The good thing for the goblin player is that he has so many production buildings, and even though it looks like he has not many units on the field, that's gonna change within a second. Because he has, remember, four production buildings under his control, and the goblin caves are even level 3. So he might be able to get those units on the field pretty soon. I don't see Gorkil the Goblin King on the field anymore, Arvin is level 6 almost. I mean, she's level 6, uh, Gorkil is level 5. Maybe Shelob was a bad investment from Sauron, because he didn't even try to uh, try to revive her, actually, guys. Balrog is gone now. He was able to kill all the production buildings, there are no more barracks, there is no more stable on the field for the Elven player. That means keeping those units alive here under, under his control is very, very important, because he can't afford to get them back on the field any soon. And also his resource income is looking not that great, because he keeps losing those Malone trees all the time. On the bright side, he has a lot of units on the field, you know, a lot of Lancers, Lorien Warriors. We're gonna have now Skull Totem being used once again from Gorkil the Goblin King. He has to be careful though, he is pretty low. Uh, and I think the album player won't be able to keep going now, because he has not many units remaining. Especially those Lancers, they have to avoid those pikemen, big time. Because the pikemen are able to kill them in a second. Aldir is level 7, still 3 levels away from getting the Golden Arrow unlocked. Uh, I don't see Arvin on the field, remember Glorfindel got taken down before. I think Arvin is potentially also dead. I can't see her. Uh, Aldir is... Nah, there she is, okay. She is kinda invisible around the map. She's also level um, 6 and has flat ability available. She might be using it now, I guess, against a building, potentially. I think he's looking to find one of the tunnels slash production buildings. We gotta keep an eye on the Arvin. I wanna, I wanna see this ability, actually, guys. Because I was not able to catch it so far. I mean, the map is looking blue to me. Uh, she's dealing decent amount of damage to the tunnel, which is only level 1. It has only 1000 HP, so it's going down quite fast. On the other side, we have some upgraded half troll pikemen on the field, guys. And they will be bursting down those Malone trees in a second, trust me on that one. It looks like he has Scavenger, right? Yeah, he has Scavenger. I was wondering why he was getting money all the time from killing the enemy units. And Scavenger is nice in a situation like this, definitely nice. 
Look at these Lancers, they are dying so fast. So many arrows here. It looks like they won't be able to finish off this uh, tunnel in the backside. Arwen was able to get away. Uh, PowerPoint wise, the Alvin player has 12 power points collected after the Arrow Volley, the Eagles, the Tom Bomber deal, Foresight, Heal and Rallying Call. And Arrow Volley is available as well as Heal and Rallying Call, guys. Arrow Volley can be used defensively, obviously. It's different in BFME 2 compared to Rise of the Witch King. In Rise of the Witch King, it hits you one time and then it leaves a fire on the ground which is gonna damage you or the enemy units in this case over time. In BFME 2, however, it's gonna shoot like three times if I'm not mistaken, but there is no fire on the ground. Uh, but, you know, I think it's much, much faster as well. It's not dodgeable in BFME 2, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, guys. Okay, uh, I mean, Gorkil is very, very important later on as well. With level 10, you can summon three fire drakes under your control, and they are pretty devastating. Uh, Arvin has to be careful. The Lancers are dying very quickly, and so is Arvin. I mean, you have to avoid with a mounted hero to fight against Pikeman. Watcher is almost back up. Balrog is reloading as well. 10 power points collected on top of that. Scavenger is being super helpful, but Arrowwall is coming in clutch, and that's what I mean. Like, those weak units are gonna die in a second, but Hydir died, right? Yeah, Hydir is dead, guys, unfortunately, for the Alvin player. And because of the upgrades here with the scavenger armor, uh, those pikemen, they were able to survive the arrow volley. Arvin is quite low as well. There is no well, but she, she can heal up our, uh, you know, around the fortress, if I'm not mistaken. Now the goblin player has the map control once again, and again, I think... Oh, the watcher is being used once again. Move now because, oh, look at the slab. Plus 5, plus 5, plus 5 for every single Lorian archer dying because of the scavenger. And scavenger is so nice. It's gonna give you money constantly, you know? For every time you kill any enemy building slash enemy units, you will get money 24 7. I wish there would be a, stat there would be a statistic in BFME games that can tell you after the game. How much money you actually made from the abilities. Nice flats, by the way. Or, you know, like a statistics for every single hero slash every single uh, power point ability from the spell book. That can show you after the game, okay? Uh, Scavenger gave you like 2000 gold. Uh, for example, the flat ability from Arvin killed 5 buildings and 50 units. For example, something like this, you know? Or the Eagles, the Eagles were able to kill so many buildings and so many um, units. Would be nice to see how effective these abilities are and you could see that from the statistics and this would also help the uh, help the team to balance the game even more i think that would be nice i would love to see that i think it's impossible but still <laughs> all right the elven player is kind of in a turtle situation once again the white men of dunland are doing a great job stealing man money whenever they are able to attack with the pillage ability it's the it's a passive from the white men of dunland the rallying call is being used now on these units. They are able to kill those units all the time, but it's not a big deal. Because the goblin player is just trying to kill some buildings. And he's able to do that. The worm is gonna be summoned now. Eagle is gonna be summoned from the fortress this time. Uh, with the eagle nest upgrade. And unlike the eagles from the power point, this eagle is gonna remain on the field permanently. Or until he dies. Unfortunately, however, uh, the Eagle from BFME 2 has no abilities unlike the Eagle from the Rise of the Witch King, guys. Alright, so we have Orkill the Goblin King leveling up. He's now level 7, has unlocked the Poison Singer. On the other side, we have 825 command points available for the Goblin player. He was down to 400 something like a minute ago. But again, Scavenger is being super helpful. The Whiteman of Dunland with the Pillage ability is super helpful when it comes to generate resources, guys. These resources can be invested into more tunnels, more units, obviously. Arrowally is being used now. It's gonna kill a couple of units, but it's not a big deal. Mainly goblins are dying, and goblins are one of the most cost-efficient uni units in the game. Remember, they cost only uh, 75 here. They are even cheaper here, unlike in, uh, you know, compared to Rise of the Witch King. In Rise of the Witch King, they cost 100 uh, resources each. 7 power points collected. The album player has 400 command points available. Eagle Summon is ready. But he has to expand in order to make more units. And it looks like he lost also all the heroes beside Arvin. So there is no more Glorfindel, there is no more 
uh, Haldir on the field. And he's also not reviving them any anymore. Obviously, he has to make more barracks. He has zero production buildings on the field so far, guys. He keeps losing them to the Worm. He keeps losing them to the Balrog. He keeps losing them to the Weapon of Talent. Which is pretty nice. I mean, those Goblin Caves and the, sp the Spider Pit, but also the Fissure, are untouched all game long. I think the Elven player was not able one time to destroy any of these buildings, guys. That means um, he can afford to get many more units on the field, especially from a level 3 building. I can't select this one for some reason. You can see they're gonna come out 25% faster. So the amount of time you need in order to recruit one Goblin Warrior is actually pretty insane. I think the second you click on them, they're gonna be on the field pretty much like 10 seconds later. So even though if you lose units all the time, it's not a big deal. Because goblins, first of all, they don't give too many power points if they die. And they also don't cost you too, much, too many, you know, resources. And I think you generate so much more resources from the scavenger. That it's absolutely fine if you lose them. Because you can't, you know, they're coming out from the goblin caves in seconds anyway. 825 power points collected. For the goblin player, Balrog is almost back up, but on the other side, we have the big flat ability available this time for the elven player Actelion. And it's pretty nice if you use it against buildings and units at the same time. Ideally, what you want, what you can do, I mean, it's always easier said than done, I know that. But ideally, what you can do is go for an attack, force the goblin player to go for a defensive, you know, mood pretty much around this side, and then you want to use the flat, but he's going to use the flat. I think on the buildings now. You wanna use the flat against units and buildings at the same time? That's the dream. Maybe right now, maybe right now would be a great timing because you could hit the units and the buildings at the same time, but he's actually holding it for whatever reason. Uh, the thing is, I'm not sure if you can actually burst down the level three goblin caves with that. If yes, you should be definitely using it. If not, you shouldn't use it because, you know, I think maybe you can still kill them right after. But you can see mainly there is only one archer battalion. I mean one lancer battalion and one peasant battalion. That's pretty much it. Blood is going to be used. It's a small one from Arvin against the units. And eagles are ready as well. They're definitely, you should definitely use it. Kill the expansions around the fortress. Damage the buildings. And you can use the eagles right after in order to finish them off. The eagle is healing up over time. And we shall see what's gonna happen. I mean, it's kind of a tricky situation right now. Everything is possible. I think you should not wait too much because Baldrock is gonna be up very, very soon for the Goblin player once again. And we have Glorfindel back on the field. I wish he would revive also Haldir, guys. Because Haldir was also almost level 7, if I'm not mistaken. So really close for the Golden Arrow power spike. Or kill the Goblin King against Tom Bombadil and Arvin. Bombo combo. Tom Bombadil gives you also leadership here, by the way. And Gorkil doesn't care. Like, he's also quite tanky. Almost 3000 HP, while Arvin has only 2500. I mean, Arvin is also pretty tanky, actually. But it's not only about the HP they have, it's also about the armor and the resistance they have, which we can't see. Uh, you know, when, we, when you don't know it, pretty much. You have to know it. <laughs> Balrog is almost available. Uh, Flat is gonna be used finally now, and it is not able to one-shot the go uh, Goblin Caves level 3, but they are damaged big time. Now, ideally you wanna use your Eagles, but I think they might die in a second, because these buildings are gonna be able to shoot down the Eagles as well as the Fortress, with the arrow expansion around the Fortress, and the Balrog summon at the same time. Okay, Balrog is actually being summoned now twice in this game. Raphire is being used. To kill the Malone tree. I think he will be able to kill those production buildings. In this case, there's only one tower he has. Uh, one barracks he has around this side. The tower is not going to damage Balrog too much. And you get 100 resources from killing the tower because of the scavenger, guys. Eagle summon is being used this time. But it, is, it looks like he doesn't want to commit against the goblin caves for whatever reason. And he's going to be able to take down only one tunnel. And I think that's not worth it at all. Like... One eagle is already dead. The, the other one can't really commit against this side anymore. Balrog is doing his thing. Balrog is actually dying very fast against Silverton arrows, guys. Like, I think if you have, for example, like 5 to 6 battalions of Mirkwood archers with the Silverton arrow upgrade purchase, and Balrog doesn't care about them, 
we might be able to burst down the Balrog quite fast. Look at the damage the towers are dealing against Balrog, it's actually quite significant. And the Eagle, you know, is just doing his thing. It's nice because he keeps fighting for the map control all the time. But I think it's not enough. The Goblin player has now 500 command points only though. His command points capped, but he has enough money to rebuild everything that he lost. On the other side, the Alvin player is only on 300 command points, guys. 13 power points collected after the flood. The eagle, the eagles, arrow bullet on bombardier, foresight, heal, and rallying call. He's dropping down to 250 command points. Only has barely any units remaining on the field. I did this back in the business as well as Glorfindel. It looks like Arvin couldn't make it out alive. And that's pretty much it. That, that's all he got. He has one Molon tree here and one here. That's it, guys. Like 200 command points are the minimum. You are starting the game with 200 command points, by the way. So you can't have less than that. <laughs> That's not possible. And he is now down to 200 command points. Look his money. He has 190 money. Like what? What can you do against such a reckless seed? It's a nice back and forth game, but I think he was waiting too long on his flat. The flat was nice, but there was no follow-up was playing quite defensively all the time the worm summon arrow volley is being used nice dodge he was pressing x on his keyboard to dodge the incoming damage commitment now against the fortress the heroes are the only ones left from the album play Actelion. and what a great performance from sauron in this game and i hope you like this one guys if you like the content on this channel please don't forget to leave a like on these videos and also subscribe for more content like this in the future uh, BFME 1, BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King, I'm trying to cover everything, so you will see them, some different kind of content in terms of tournaments, events, but also some normal commentary videos like this one. And I would love to see you guys also in my Twitch live streams, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards, the link for that is going to be in the description down below. Would appreciate it if you guys follow me there as well. GG well played, well deserved the victory from the Goblin player. Thank you guys again for watching, I see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace.